Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for getting up so early to hear about this talk. This is a very important talk for everyone here because Lyme disease is the number one vector-borne spreading epidemic worldwide. It will mimic every disease process that you see in your patients, and I'm going to present to you today a 15-point differential diagnostic map which will tell you how to navigate these very chronic, complex patients. I'm going to talk to you about a new definition for Lyme called MSIDS, Multiple Chronic Infectious Disease Syndrome. It's a new paradigm for all the chronic diseases that you may see. Chronic Lyme disease, from my definition, is a symptom complex of not just Borrelia burgdorferi, but also of multiple co-infections. Bacterial infections include, but are not limited to, Borrelia burgdorferi, Anaplasma, Babesia, and Pyroplasmas, other parasites, Bartonella, Mycoplasma, rickettsial infections like Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever and Q Fever, as well as other bacteria and viruses, which may, are now widespread in ticks. Multiple co-infections may suppress the immune system and cause a nonspecific stimulation of the immune system, leading to inflammation and immune dysfunction. And MSIDS, or Multiple Chronic Infectious Disease Syndrome, which is a term I coined two years ago, would better define these patients with chronic Borrelian co-infections who suffer from chronic fatigue, muscle and joint pain, neuropathy, neuropsychiatric abnormalities. These patients have multiple overlapping abnormalities which are responsible for their symptoms. So this is what we're going to discuss this morning is some of the in investigative treatment protocols for Lyme and co-infections, and I'll be discussing with you today a functional medicine matrix model on how to diagnose and treat these patients. So this is the 15-point map that you can use for most of your chronically ill patients, not just the ones with Lyme disease. But this is what we find in our Lyme patients. We find that there are 15 different points that are basically keeping these patients ill. The first is A, bacterial infections like Lyme or Lichia bartonella. Then there are parasites like Babesia, viruses, and Candida. But then we also have a lot of immune dysfunction, where the patients may be ANA positive or rheumatoid factor positive. Worse if you're HLA-DR4 positive. There's a lot of inflammation with cytokines in these patients, with interleukin-1, interleukin-6, and tumor necrosis factor alpha, causing a sickness syndrome. There's toxicity from multiple chemicals from the environment, including heavy metals and mold and neurotoxins. There's allergies of foods, drugs, and environmental allergies, nutritional and enzyme deficiencies, as well as functional medicine abnormalities in the biochemical pathways. There's mitochondrial dysfunction, psychological issues, endocrine disorders, sleep problems where these Lyme patients can't get to sleep, autonomic nervous system dysfunction with POTS syndrome, GI symptoms with elevated liver functions. These patients generally have a lot of pain and they're addicted to narcotics and they're usually deconditioned and need physical therapy. So you've got to look at all these 15 points in the patients that are chronically ill to get them better. Now if we put it together, these chronic infections have neurobiological effects. These agents create inflammation through various pathways, and these inflammation create free radicals and oxidative stress, which damage the cell membranes, mitochondria, and nerve cells. Some infectious agents produce neurotoxins like quinolinic acid and other toxic byproducts which affect the nerve cells. You can get autoimmune reactions from antibodies produced from these agents that cross-react with their own tissue antigens. And mitigating these effects requires treating the three eyes, infection, immune issues, and inflammation simultaneously, while supporting detox pathways and eliminating environmental triggers such as heavy metals, which increase inflammation. We also need to address any hormone abnormalities, nutritional and enzyme deficiencies, autonomic nervous system dysfunction, getting them to sleep. In other words, all these 15 points that I'm going to tell you about this morning. So in this model, patients who come to you with acute and chronic fatigue and pain and different neuropsychiatric manifestations, in fact, may have Lyme disease and MSIDS, and you may not know it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So chronic Lyme disease and MSIDS is truly the great imitator like syphilis was years ago. You can get fatigue and pain syndromes associated with Lyme and co-infections. For example, it will mimic chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. It will cause autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and MS. It can cause neurological problems like headaches, migraines, neuropathy, radiculopathy, encephalopathy, cranial nerve palsies, carpal tunnel syndrome. It can cause gastrointestinal problems like inflammatory bowel, interstitial cystitis, GUI and pain syndromes, cardiac where patients come in with chest pain and palpitations, all the different psychiatric manifestations you could see, endocrine disorders, which you at A4M know well about because it causes early andropause in men and growth hormone deficiency, which I see in most of my Lyme patients, and ophthalmologically painful eye syndromes. So Lyme disease is really the great imitator. It's been talked about from several authors like Dr. Fallon and Dr. Packner that it can mimic every disease process. It can cause every psychiatric manifestation known to mankind. We see higher prevalence of antibodies to Borrelia in psychiatric patients than normal patients. We also see a lot of neurological symptoms with encephalopathy 
and neurocognitive abnormalities in children who may have difficulties in school. We also see it with Alzheimer's. They've now shown Borrelia burgdorferi in the brains of patients with Alzheimer's disease. And we see it, of course, associated with chronic fatigue and fibromyalgia, and even rheumatoid arthritis. They found that rheumatoid factor correlates with antibodies against Borrelia guarinii. 57% of patients with rheumatoid arthritis show reactivity to multiple Borrelia antigens, and Lyme arthritis can mimic rheumatoid arthritis. We just see, see, excuse me, we see the same thing with lupus. Seroreactivity to Borrelia antigens by the ELISA was detected in 40% of patients who have SLE. But because the Western blots were CDC negative um, and not CDC positive, the authors assumed false positive serologies. But positive ANA testing in male or rashes are seen in Lyme disease.